Chapter 1 Jack Sparrow's Return The moon was high above a dark ocean. A stone prison stood above a beach. A group of guards carried six wooden boxes to the prison wall and threw them into the ocean below. Suddenly, there was a gunshot inside one of the boxes. An arm reached through the newly made hole and opened the box. It was Captain Jack Sparrow, the smartest pirate who ever sailed the ocean. As he looked around, his gold tooth shone in the moonlight. Jack seemed calm at first. Then his eyes grew round with fear, and he quickly searched the box. He found it, his hat. He placed the hat on his head and smiled. He reached into the box again. Sorry, my friend, he said. He pulled hard at the leg bone of the other body in the box. With the bone in his hands, he lowered one end into the water. Then he rowed the box toward his ship, the Black Pearl. Gibbs, a fine old pirate, was waiting on the Pearl for Jack's return. He helped his captain onto the ship. Jack took a piece of cloth from his jacket and looked at it carefully. So, you found something, asked a toothless pirate named Leech. Every man on the ship wanted news about the treasure. Yes, but I haven't studied it yet, Jack said. Suddenly, a small monkey jumped in front of Jack and screamed. It took the piece of cloth and ran into the sails. When the moon shone on the monkey, its skin disappeared. Only its bones were left. This was Captain Barbosa's monkey, and, like its owner, it was cursed. It was the living dead. Jack hated the animal. He took out his gun and shot at it. The monkey fell and dropped the cloth, but quickly jumped up again. It smiled. One of the pirates caught the piece of cloth. It's a key, he said. It's even better than a key, Jack said. It's a drawing of a key. The sailors didn't understand. They looked at Gibbs. Captain, Gibbs said, we wanted gold and... Jack turned to his men. What do keys do? he asked. They unlock things, Leech said, suddenly excited. Important things, Gibbs said. He imagined chests full of gold. So... We're going to unlock something. Jack shook his head. No, we don't have the key yet, so we can't unlock anything, stupid. The sailors looked at Jack. So, we're going to find the key? Gibbs asked. A key won't help us, Jack said impatiently. We don't know what it opens. Please, he added, try to understand. So... Which way are we going? Another pirate asked. Ah, yes. Jack opened his compass. On his last adventure, this compass took him to Isla de Muerta and the hidden treasure. But this time he seemed unhappy when he looked at it. He closed it quickly and waved his arm. Pull up the sails. Let's go that way, he finally said pointing toward the ocean. Captain, Gibbs asked. I'll plan our trip later. Now hurry and start sailing, Jack ordered. The men were unhappy, but prepared to sail. The captain's acting a little strange, one pirate said quietly to Gibbs. Yes, Gibbs answered. He doesn't know where we're going. Outside a small church in the Caribbean town of Port Royal, Elizabeth Swan was on her knees in her wedding dress. Her tears mixed with the rain. 
Around her were overturned chairs and no husband. Slowly she went inside to wait. Through her tears she saw a man come into the church. With him were an officer and a group of soldiers who were pushing a prisoner. The prisoner was the man she wanted to marry, Will Turner. Will, Elizabeth called. What's happening? I don't know, Will said sadly. You look beautiful, he added softly. You, free the prisoner immediately, said a loud voice from the door. It was Elizabeth's father, Governor Swan. He looked angrily at the officer. The officer didn't move. Governor Swan studied the man's face. Cutler Beckett, he asked finally. It's Lord Beckett now, the man replied. Lord or not, do you have a reason to arrest this man? I do. Mr. Mercer, Beckett said to a man next to him. Mercer gave him a letter. Governor Swan looked at it. This letter isn't for the arrest of Will Turner, he said. This is for the arrest of Elizabeth Swan. Is it? Beckett asked. My mistake. Arrest her, he ordered. The soldiers took Elizabeth. Why? Elizabeth asked angrily. Beckett didn't answer. He produced two more letters. Here's the letter for William Turner, and this one orders the arrest of James Norrington. Do you know where he is? Commodore Norrington left here some months ago, the governor answered quickly. We don't know where he is. Why are you arresting us? Elizabeth asked bravely. Beckett looked at his prisoners. You helped a pirate to escape. The punishment for that is death he said happily. You remember Jack Sparrow, don't you? Will looked at Elizabeth. Captain Jack Sparrow, they said together. Yes, Beckett answered. He turned to his men. Take them away. Captain Jack Sparrow had his own problems. Alone in his room on the Black Pearl, he held his compass tightly in his hand. He looked at it and quickly closed it. Then he shook it and looked at it again. Not good. He reached for a drink. The bottle was empty. He left the room to find another bottle. The drink's cupboard was almost empty. He smiled when he saw a bottle on the lower shelf. He opened it and turned it over. Sand fell onto the floor. You have no more time, Jack, a voice said suddenly. Jack turned. In front of him was a man's face covered with animals and plants from the bottom of the ocean. Bootstrap? Jack asked. Bill Turner? Yes, Jack Sparrow. You look good? Jack looked at the sailor. You don't, he said. Is this a dream? No, Bootstrap said. He gave Jack a drink. You got the pearl back, he said. Your son helped me, Jack told him. Now Bootstrap was surprised. William? A pirate? Yes, Jack said. He's too honest, though, he added. So, why are you here? Davy Jones sent me. Bootstrap answered. I'm sorry that I fought against you. Everything went wrong after we took your ship. I was cursed, and at the bottom of the ocean. I couldn't move, and I couldn't die. Jack looked afraid. Then Davy Jones came to me and made an offer. If I spend one hundred years on his ship, I can rest after that. Bootstrap looked at his old captain. He wants you. He owns you too, Jack. He lifted the pearl from the ocean floor for you. You were her captain for thirteen years.
Jack started to speak, but Bootstrap stopped him. You can't stop the curse, he said. Your soul will spend a lifetime on his ship. Davy's ship, the Flying Dutchman already has a captain, Jack said quickly. He doesn't need me. Bootstrap shook his head sadly. Captain Jack Sparrow never stopped fighting. It's Davy Jones's world for you, Jack. Jones will send his monster, the Kraken, and pull the pearl back down to the bottom of the ocean, and you with it. Any idea when? Jack asked. He tried not to sound worried. Bootstrap lifted his arm and pointed to Jack's hand. Jack stepped away, but it was too late. There was a black mark on his hand. He was now a marked man. He'll find you, Bootstrap said. Jack looked up, but Bootstrap Bill was gone. Jack screamed and ran through the ship. Get up, he shouted to his sleeping men. Hurry! Then he tied a cloth around his hand, covering the black mark. He didn't want anyone to see it. Gibbs found Jack behind the mast. Where are we going? he asked. We're going to land, Jack shouted. Which port? Gibbs asked. Land! It doesn't matter where. The monkey jumped down from the mast onto Jack's shoulder and knocked his hat into the ocean. Jack's hat? Gibbs cried to the other men. He knew the captain loved his hat. Turn the ship around. No, Jack said quickly. Leave it. His men were surprised. Gibbs turned to Jack. What's coming after us? He asked quietly. Captain Jack Sparrow's hat sailed far away from the Black Pearl. A sailor on a fishing boat picked it up. He liked it and put it on his head. When another sailor tried to take it from him, the two men began to fight. Suddenly, the boat shook. The sailors looked around, then down at the hat. They tried to throw it into the ocean. Too late. Their boat broke into pieces and was pulled down into the ocean. Then the water was calm again. Chapter 2 The Search for the Black Pearl Two guards took Will Turner into Lord Beckett's office. Are you going to free Elizabeth? Will asked. If you help me, I'll free her, Beckett answered. We want you to find Captain Sparrow. I want you to get something that belongs to him. You want the Black Pearl? Will said. Beckett was surprised. The Black Pearl? No, I want something that's smaller and much more important. Something that Sparrow carries at all times. A compass. Bring back the compass, then I will free Elizabeth. Will Turner angrily left Beckett's office and went to Elizabeth's room in the prison building. Governor Swan followed him and heard them talking. Jack's compass? Why does Beckett want that? His reason isn't important, Will said. I'll find Jack and bring him back to Port Royal. Then we'll both be free. How are you going to find him? Elizabeth asked, worried. Her voice showed her fear. Tortuga. I'll start there. I won't stop until I find him. Then I'll return and marry you. Will Turner started his search immediately. He went to Tortuga because Jack often stayed there. It was the dirtiest port in the Caribbean a place for drunken pirates who wanted adventures. When he arrived, Will saw a friend of Jack's, a woman with red hair and a red dress. Her name was Scarlet. I haven't seen him for a month, Scarlet said angrily. 
When you find him, give him a message. She lifted her hand and hit Will across the face. I don't know about Jack, but there's a ship with black sails at an island south of here, said an old boatman. Give me some money and I'll take you to it. The boatman took Will to the island, and there they found the black pearl on its side on the beach. The boatman refused to go closer, so Will jumped into the water. He swam to the beach and then, very wet, walked across to the ship. There was nobody there, but he found an old fire in the sand. The firewood was still warm. Jack was near. Jack! Will shouted. Jack Sparrow! Mr. Gibb! He pulled out his sword and went into the forest. There he noticed a small red bottle on the ground. Gibbs, Will thought, that's his bottle. He picked it up. A fishing line was tied to the bottle, and Will put his hand on it. Then, suddenly, he noticed two eyes in a tree, and an arm that pulled the line hard. Will was pulled off his feet. As he hung by his leg from a tree, he saw a group of islanders. They had bite marks on their faces and bodies, and they were wearing bones around their necks. The islanders ran toward Will, and he kicked some of them to the ground with his free leg. Come here and fight, he shouted at one of the men. The man quickly shot a drug into Will's neck. Will stopped moving, and the men cut him down from the tree. In her small room in Port Royal Prison, Elizabeth waited. She was tired and closed her eyes. Then she heard the sound of keys, and a guard opened the door. Come quickly, her father said, stepping out of the shadows behind the guard. What's happening? Elizabeth asked. You can return to England, Governor Swan said. I've found a ship for you. Hawkins, the captain, is an old friend of mine. They ran quickly out of the prison. The governor took Elizabeth to a waiting vehicle pulled by two horses, but she refused to get in. I'm waiting for Will, she said. We can't wait for Will's help, the governor said. I'm not going to watch my daughter die. He pushed her inside and put a gun in her hand. Then he shut the door and quickly drove the vehicle to the ship. Near the port, the governor slowed the horses. Two men were waiting in the shadows. One of them wore a captain's hat. The governor jumped down from his seat and hurried to the men. Captain Hawkins, he said, happy to see his friend. But Hawkins didn't answer. The captain fell to the ground, covered in blood. The governor realized that the other man in the shadows was holding up the captain's dead body. Good evening, governor, the second man said, slowly cleaning blood from his knife with a cloth. Swan knew the man, Mercer, Beckett's assistant. Governor Swan ran back to the vehicle. Elizabeth! he shouted. Mercer called some soldiers. He smiled as he opened the vehicle door. It was empty. Where is she? Mercer said angrily. Who? Swan asked nervously. Mercer pushed the governor against the vehicle and shouted, Elizabeth! She never listened to me, the governor said and smiled. Take him away! Mercer ordered the soldiers. Lord Beckett walked into his dark office and stopped. There's somebody here, he thought. Elizabeth stepped out of the shadows and lifted her father's gun. I have information, she said. You sent Will to find Jack Sparrow's compass. But it won't help you. I saw the treasure on Isla de Muerta 
and you need to know something. Beckett smiled. You think that the compass only points to Isla de Muerta? You're wrong, Miss Swan. The cursed gold is not important. He pointed to a big world map. There is more than one treasure chest in these oceans, he said. Elizabeth pointed the gun at Lord Beckett's head. These letters on your desk will free Will Turner, she said. Sign them. Beckett stopped laughing and signed the letters. I want the compass, he said. Elizabeth took the letters, turned, and disappeared silently into the dark night. The following morning, the Edinburgh trader sailed from Port Royal. One of the sailors was Elizabeth. She was dressed in sailor's clothes, and none of the men on the ship noticed her. Chapter 3 The Island of the Pelagostos When Will Turner woke up, his hands and feet were tied. The islanders were carrying him towards some wooden houses. Finally, they put him down in front of a large chair. He looked up and smiled. A man was sitting on the chair, and it was Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow, Will said. I am very happy to see you. Jack didn't answer. Jack? Jack, it's me, Will Turner. Tell them to free me. Jack stepped down from his chair and spoke in a strange language. Will suddenly noticed the dead men's bones around the chair. Jack, listen, Will said. I need the compass. Elizabeth is in danger. We were arrested for helping you. She's going to die. One of the islanders pointed at Will's leg and hungrily touched his stomach. Jack smiled, and the men shouted happily. No! Will screamed. Jack, what did you say to them? But Jack didn't answer. He climbed back onto his chair and looked over Will's head. The men started to pull Will away. They're going to prepare me for dinner, he thought. Jack suddenly looked down at Will. Save me, the captain said quietly out of the corner of his mouth. The men threw Will into a cage full of men, chained to a rocky hill. Some of the sailors from the Black Pearl were prisoners in another cage. Oh, you shouldn't be here, Gibbs greeted him. Why is this happening? Will asked. He looked at the sailors. Jack seems to be the chief. Yes, Gibbs said sadly. The Pelagostos made him their chief, and now they want to free his soul from his body. They're going to cook him and eat him. Where are the other sailors from the Pearl? Will asked. Look more carefully at these cages, Gibbs said quietly. The Pelagostus built them after we arrived. Will looked at the walls of his cage. They were made of bones. He quickly moved his hand away. The meal starts when the sun goes down, Gibbs said seriously. Jack's life will end when the music stops. In a small boat near the beach, two of Barbosa's pirates, Pintel and Raghetti, rowed with their backs to the sun. A dog with a ring of keys in its mouth was sitting at the end of the boat. Suddenly, the men saw the black pearl. Look, there it is, Pintel cried. The dog jumped into the clear blue water and swam to the beach. Pintel looked up at the ship's black sails. It's ours, he said greedily. Then they heard the sound of music through the trees. The music on the island grew louder as the Pelagostos prepared their big meal. Captain Jack Sparrow was their special guest and their main course. He tried to smile. The islanders placed a long, thin piece of wood above an unlit fire. Jack looked at it and turned away. We need a bigger fire, he shouted 
in the language of the Pelagostos. I am the chief. I need more wood. Big fire. More wood. The islanders hurried away in search of more wood. Jack waited until every man was gone. Then he ran and ran. When he arrived at a small house, a large man opened the door. Jack stepped back. I'm not running away. No, he said. Soon he was tied to the long piece of wood over the unlit fire. The fire was now very big. Nice work, he said. The Pelagostos smiled proudly. Too nice, Jack thought to himself. On the rocky hill, Will and the pirates waited in their bone cages. I must do something, Will said to himself. I must save Elizabeth. Try to move your cage, he shouted to the pirates. Move it toward the rocks. Then put your feet through the holes between the bones and try to climb the hill. Leech and the pirates in the other cage understood and started to move it slowly up the hill. But suddenly a guard saw them and screamed loudly. The music stopped. As Will and the men in his cage reached the top of the hill, the islanders ran toward them. They pulled the cage up around their legs and started to run. They had to find the black pearl fast. When the guard ran toward them, the Pelagostas were preparing to light the fire under Jack. The prisoners are trying to escape, he screamed. Follow them, Jack ordered. They mustn't escape. What shall we do? The Pelagostas islanders couldn't decide. Shall we light the fire or follow the other prisoners? We want to free our chief from his body, but he is telling us to leave. Finally, they decided to follow the other prisoners. But one man dropped a piece of burning wood, and suddenly the fire was burning under Jack. There was nothing that Jack could do about it. They're going to cook me, Captain Jack Sparrow, he said to himself. Jack finally escaped from the burning wood by throwing his body from one side to the other. Watched by a small boy, he jumped away from the fire and ran into the trees. The boy also ran into the forest and found the Pelagostos. Our chief is running away, he called. The islanders shouted angrily. They stopped following Jack's men and ran after Jack. Will and some of the pirates arrived on the beach and broke out of their cage. They didn't notice Pintel and Regetti preparing the pearl. Excellent, Gibbs shouted. We can sail. I'm not going to leave without Jack, Will said. Gibbs suddenly pointed along the beach, and Will saw Jack. He was running down the beach with a Pelagostos close behind him. Jack, hurry, Gibbs shouted. Jack ran through the shallow water to the side of the pearl, and Gibbs pulled him onto the ship. Chapter 4 The Secret of the Dead Man's Chest Jack Sparrow sat at the front of the Black Pearl. Do you want us to sail away from the island? Gibbs asked him. Yes, but stay in shallow water, Jack replied. He opened his compass and looked at it carefully. Will Turner stood next to him. Jack, he said quietly. Not now, Jack answered, with his eyes still on the compass. Jack, I need... Not now, Jack said angrily, reaching for his gun. Finally, he saw Will. Oh, it's you. Jack, Will said again. I need that compass. Why? Jack asked. He looked at the compass again, then closed it. I want to save Elizabeth, Will said. Jack shook his head. I've heard those words before, he said. We saved Elizabeth before. 
Why don't you watch her more carefully? Lock her up in a room. She is locked up, in prison. She's going to die because she helped you. Jack started to climb up into the sails. That isn't my problem, he said. Suddenly, he felt the cold touch of Will's sword at his neck. Give me the compass, now. Then the English will stop looking for you. Jack said slowly, All right, you get the compass and you save your pretty girl. What do I get? You'll be free. The English will stop searching for you, Will explained again. I will give you the compass, Jack said slowly, but you must find something for me. It's quite dangerous. He pulled the small piece of cloth out of his pocket. Will looked at the picture of the key on the cloth. Is this going to save Elizabeth? he asked. Jack put his mouth close to Will's ear. How much do you know about Davy Jones? he said very quietly. Nothing, Will said. Jack smiled. Yes, he said. It's going to save Elizabeth. On the Edinburgh trader, Elizabeth Swan, dressed in a sailor's clothes, was on her way to Tortuga. She was hoping to find Will, but Will was nowhere near Tortuga now. He, Jack Sparrow, and Jack's men were traveling down the Pantano River in two rowing boats. Why is Jack so nervous? Will asked Gibbs quietly. He's made an enemy of Davy Jones, Gibbs said seriously. He thinks that he's only safe on land. If he goes out onto the ocean, Davy Jones will take him. Davy Jones? Well, he has a monster that works for him. The Kraken, Gibbs said. His voice shook. It's terrible. It can pull a ship to the bottom of the ocean. Gibbs stopped, and Will saw the fear in his eyes. Is Jack afraid to die? asked Will. Davy Jones doesn't kill you, Gibbs answered. He punishes you. Think of the worst thing in the world. It's waiting for you in Davy Jones's world, and it never ends. And the key will save him? Will asked finally. That's the question that Jack wants to answer. So he's going to visit her. Her? Huh? Will asked nervously. Yes, her. The rowing boats stopped near a small wooden house high in a tree. There was a light outside the door. Don't worry, Jack called to the other men. He tried to speak happily. Tia Dalma and I are old friends. I'll watch your back, Gibbs offered. I'm more worried about my front. Jack said quietly. As Jack climbed up into the house, the other pirates stayed close behind him. In the low light, they saw many strange animals in glass bottles. Raggetti touched his wooden eye when he noticed a bottle of eyes in a corner. Tia Dalma sat at a table in the shadows. She wasn't surprised by the visitors, because she could see into the future. She stood. Jack Sparrow, she said, I knew the wind would bring you back to me one day. Her eyes moved past Jack to Will. She smiled as she looked at him. I can see a great future for you, William Turner, she said, moving closer. Do you know me? Will asked. You want to know me? she replied. She looked into his eyes and pulled him close. Jack walked to Tia Dalma and pushed her back toward the table. We need your help, he said. Is Jack Sparrow asking for help? she asked, amused. It's not for me, Jack answered. It's for William. If you help me, I will help him. 
Tia Dalma smiled. How can I help you? How will you pay me? I will pay you with this, Jack said brightly. He took a wooden box from Pintel's hand. Inside was the monkey. Jack lifted his gun and shot it. The little monkey looked angrily at him. The pay is fair, Tia Dalma agreed. Her eyes moved again to Will. Jack passed the picture of the key to Will, and he quickly showed it to Tia Dalma. We are looking for this. What does it unlock? Will asked. Tia Dalma spoke to Jack. Your key opens a chest. What is inside the chest? Gibbs asked. Gold? Treasure? Pintel said, his voice full of hope. Nothing bad, I hope, Raggetti said nervously. Tia Dalma smiled at the pirates. Then she told her story. You know about Davy Jones, a man of the ocean, a great sailor, until he met man's biggest problem. What is man's biggest problem? Will asked her. The ocean, Gibbs said seriously. Tia Dalma shook her head. Adding numbers, Pintel said. Tia Dalma shook her head again. The difference between good and bad, Rigetti suggested. Everyone in the room looked at the one-eyed pirate and shook their heads. A woman, Jack said, ending the game. Tia Dalma smiled at the rough pirate. A woman. He fell in love, but his love brought great pain. He couldn't live with the pain, but he couldn't die. The pirate smiled sadly. They understood the story. Exactly what did he put into the chest? Will asked. He cut his heart out of his body and put it in a chest. He hid the chest from the world. He keeps the key with him at all times. Will finally understood. The key opened the chest that held Jones's heart. You knew this, Will said to Jack. No, I didn't, Jack said nervously. Well, I didn't know where the key was. Will didn't believe him. But now we know, Jack said smoothly. You can go on to Jones's ship, the Flying Dutchman, and take the key. Then you can go back to Port Royal and save your pretty girlfriend. Jack moved toward the door. Tia Dalma spoke before he opened it. Show me your hand, she said. Slowly, Jack untied the cloth. Tia Dalma looked carefully at the black mark. Gibbs saw the mark, too. Pintel and Rigetti watched the old pirate turn in a circle three times for good luck. Not knowing why, they also turned three times. Tia Dalma moved across the room and climbed the stairs. At the top, she opened a great door. The sound of the ocean came quietly from outside it. Tia Dalma slowly closed the door and came down the stairs again. In her hands, she carried a large bottle with a wide top that she gave to Jack. Davy Jones can step on land only once every ten years, she said to him. She put some earth into the bottle. You are safe on land, Jack Sparrow, so carry the land with you. Jack looked into the bottle. Is this bottle of earth really going to help me? he asked. Tia Dalma reached out her hand for the bottle. If you don't want it, give it back to me. Now, Jack cried and held the bottle to his chest. Then it will help you, she said. Will looked at Tia Dalma. We need to find Davy Jones and the Flying Dutchman, he said. Tia Dalma smiled at his young face, then sat at her table again. 
I'll tell you where to go, she said.